Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, September 11th, 2020. Welcome to another eBay video. In today's eBay video, we're going to be talking about blocking people on eBay. We're also going to be talking a little bit about the fall seller update, which previewed a couple of days ago. We're also going to be talking about some tips that I think you guys will find interesting. And of course, your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. As you can see, it's cloudy. It's been a very rainy, cloudy week. Not very nice at all. So let's get started first with your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. Firstly on returns, Dennis Copper wrote, I got a message from PayPal. Case opened. The buyer stated they did not authorize this purchase. The buyer did not go through eBay. They bought an item from me the last week of August. I'm in managed payments on this transaction. How is eBay ever going to help in this case? Well, Dennis, you know, I'm in managed payments too. I haven't had one of those unauthorized transactions opened since I've been in managed payments, but previously I have had about half a dozen in my eBay career. And what I've always done is I've always called eBay on the phone and I've told them that the buyer claimed that their account was used without their authorization. And years ago, eBay would lock the account up and restrict the buyer from using it anymore, which I felt was the right thing to do. But oddly enough, the last time I tried it, before I was in managed payments, the rep did not lock the account up but said that she would send it up to Trust and Safety and have them check it out. So if I were you, Dennis, I would call eBay and I would see if they would lock that person's account up. After all, we don't want any more unauthorized use on that account, do we? George Theophanopoulos wrote, and this is regarding to USPS customer cost adjustments on labels. Joe, in a matter of two weeks, I've been hit with nearly $1,000 in adjustments. I ended up having to remove my business credit card from one of the shipping services because of the charges. Something is not right with the charges at all. The crazy part is that in July we switched to UPS. Yet after I paid for adjustments two weeks ago for early June and July, they've tried to hit me up with another $700 worth. I'm telling you guys, this is more widespread than I ever thought. Let's continue. Crosswalk Larry wrote, keep an eye out for UPS rates at the end of the month. eBay and UPS made a deal for a 48% discount on ground shipping and I believe two-day air. Not sure what the two-day air discount will be. As I told you guys in previous videos, all my larger items are now going with FedEx. The post office, in my opinion, is absolutely a nightmare. And if any other business was run that way, it would either go bankrupt or be shut down. Tiger Trading Company wrote, This last August was the worst in returns and cancellations in my 18 years of selling on eBay. Buyers would buy items, sometimes two or three items, and then return them. One buyer flat out said I was a liar as to why the item was taking so long to be delivered. I have a disclaimer copied right off the USPS website saying that the USPS is experiencing shipping delays posted in all my listings and referenced back to the USPS. I had a recent buyer file a return claim saying that she found a better price online. She did not return it right away. In fact, the buyer didn't ship the item back until three weeks had gone by. When I got the dress back, the tags had been cut off and you could tell the dress had been worn. In that case, Tiger Trading Company, the item was returned to you in a condition other than which it was received by the buyer. I would definitely fight that one with eBay. However, in today's current climate and condition selling on eBay, I'm not 100% sure you're going to win. But in the old days, you would have won that one hands down. 
More on returns from Mr. Bunny Zero. My company sells automotive parts, but not just a niche like hubcaps such as yourself. We dismantle the entire cars. With them being predominantly European cars, there are a lot of modules and computers that are not plug and play without proper equipment and knowledge. There's also just a lack of overall knowledge people have of newer European cars. This sometimes causes an influx of crazy amount of returns. Our margins are so large that we decided to give free returns a shot because we started to get a lot of false item not as described returns. At that point we cared more about not getting the BS extra 5% than we did the cost of returns. I gotta stop this video right here. These freaking landscapers are gonna drive me to drink. I waited, I swear to God, I had to wait 40 minutes for a crew that was doing these two houses to finish. I come out here and now I got this crew starting. So now, give me about 45 minutes and we'll resume the video. All right, guys, let me explain the situation as to what just happened. As you know, I had to shut the camera off because of these landscapers. What really irritates me about the whole deal is that on Tuesday, the same crew was at the same house. So I figured two days later, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'd be safe. But no, they had to come right back again on Friday, so I had to shut the camera off. Now, my camera has been giving me trouble for the longest time. I would get error messages when I, sent, when I tried to turn the camera back on, saying I had a lens cover issue, even though there is no lens cover on the camera. Nonetheless, I knew that the day was going to come, that this camera was going to stop working, and unfortunately, that day is today. So the rest of the video will have to be me reading and talking so you'll only be getting audio, you won't be getting any real video. So let's continue with reading your comments, questions, and concerns like we had been doing. We left off on the comment that I was reading from Mr. Bunny Zero. I will continue with this comment exactly where I left off. I kid you not, as soon as we offered free returns, it was false item not as described after false item not as described. I've never seen anything like it in our 10 years on eBay. Within three weeks, I had enough and switched free returns off. And why do you know? Like a light switch, the insane amount of item not as describes died off, which makes no sense to me. Majority of people lie when it's free, but they don't lie when the cost is on them. Strange world we live in eBay has these people wired up wrong, lol. We still get them, obviously, but nothing like that mess. We're not massive on eBay, but pretty large, and I think that if you experience what we did at that level, Joe, you would vomit. Well, Mr. Bunny Zero, let me tell you something. I'm glad you switched off free returns, definitely. I don't recommend that for any eBay seller whatsoever, and I will never offer free returns. Last Friday, when I was filming my video, up to that point, I had no returns all week. But from the time span about 3 p.m. on Friday till about 12 noon on Saturday, less than 24 hours, I had five returns. They were coming in so quickly, they were coming in two at a time. Four out of five people were legit, meaning they claim they bought the wrong item or the wrong size and they're going to ship it back at their own expense. While it's sad and while it's inconvenient, that's to be expected. The last one lied outright. He said the items arrived damaged and that the clips were broken. This is impossible because these are metal hubcaps. I honestly believe he broke the clips while he was trying to install them. So this one's going to set me back some money. I had to provide a return label, because as you know, when, e when a buyer claims item not as described on eBay, eBay always sides with the buyer. I don't care what proof you have, you're just wasting your time. And of course, you had to be located all the way out in Washington State, so the shipping's going to be expensive. Let's continue with comments, questions, and concerns 
from Jen, that flippin' mom. I sold a $90 skirt. The buyer never paid. I opened a case and it closed in my favor. But eBay refused to refund me my final value fees. Like the hell? Let me tell you something, Jen, that flippin' mom. The same thing happened to me last month with a non-paying bidder that I snared from office to watches. It closed in my favor and they never refunded me the final value fee. Dennis Copper with another comment, and this is really interesting because it tells the story about a return. He writes, it just happened again. Return request. I denied it. Not a single confirmation from eBay. See below for what happened next. It said the return is closed, but it's not. Dennis continues, guess what? After I denied the return, the buyer sent me a message and opened the dispute through eBay talking about PayPal. I had got two more messages from eBay. I had to respond with a picture of the item. The bad buyer now says the item doesn't match the description in your listing. So as you can see, this managed payments does not work. You're still not protected. Did anyone ever see this? You can submit one picture only. No notification at PayPal at all. And then he continues, eBay now says we're preparing to send your dispute rebuttal to the buyer's payment institution. No action is needed from you at this time. We'll contact you if we need anything else. If possible, your item will be returned to the address below. Wow, that's crazy. I have not yet had any returns through the managed payments, but I guess my next one probably will be and we'll see how it goes. Jordan, ba excuse me, Jordan Brown wrote, I have first-hand experience with eBay recommending a lower price on items. I buy on eBay more than I sell. Sometimes it's an ad that takes you off eBay, which I find very ironic because they don't like transactions off eBay, but sometimes it shows a similar item for a few dollars less. I don't ever cancel for this reason. If I didn't do my homework and find the best price the first time, that's on me, not on the seller. I agree with you, Jordan Brown. 100% I'm the same way as you. I man up and I pay for items that I commit to. But not all eBayers are like us, sadly. M.E. wrote, I can confirm that eBay is showing a buyer similar items after they place the order. I'm having so many cancellations. eBay, this is not right. I agree. I had one this week. Buyer purchased some center caps from me. Immediately, within two minutes, he tried to cancel. I would like to show you how to block somebody on eBay. Once I get done reading these comments, I might just do that if I have enough time. I think most of you guys know how to do it, but it's something I need to go over again. And the last comment I'm going to read is from Pocket Change 62 Hey Joe, another amazing video. I'm just wondering how many of your subscribers are like me who say the statement along with you when you make your statement about the Fox News Cup o' Life. This is the Fox News Cup o' Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. Ha ha, love it. Excellent, excellent comment there, Pocket Change 62. That is the last comment I'm going to read for today's video. Now we're going to talk about some new topics. I want to start with blocking people. And I'm going to start with an interesting story. I'm sure all of you guys in your eBay career have blocked at least a few people on eBay. Sometimes you block them when they dick you over and file a false item not as described claim. Or sometimes you can block them ahead of time when they send you messages that are concerning. And those are the ones I really want to talk about right now. So I had a funny incident happen this week. A guy wrote to me regarding two Acura hubs that I'm selling and said to me, am I getting both hubcaps in this picture for this price? Now that's a reasonable question. And I wrote back, yes, you're getting both of them. A few minutes later, he wrote to me and said, I'm trying to buy this item from you, 
but eBay says you have me blocked and do not want to sell to me. So I thought that was weird. And I said to him, have you ever contacted me before regarding this item? And the buyer wrote back and said, no, I don't think I have. But I said to myself, I will bet my bottom dollar that this guy has contacted me in the past and given me grief. So I started going back in my messages, and at the beginning of June, sure enough, he started in. First, he started asking some legitimate questions, like, will these fit my wheel? And am I getting both of them? And each time he would email me, I would answer him back respectfully. Then, after we traded emails three or four times, he wrote back, what is your best price on this item? And you guys know how I feel about that. So at that time, I did block him. So what I did was I copied those messages and pasted them into my next comment to this guy. And I said, the reason why you're blocked is because you jerked me around on this same item back in June. And here is the proof. And I never heard back from him. Let me tell you something, guys. If you want to define the word satisfaction, that is what I had after I wrote that message. Satisfaction. Now, I did notice something very weird about the eBay blocking system, and this concerns me. It's very easy to block somebody on eBay from buying your items, like this person. But it's not working when you try and block them from contacting you. Now, if a buyer buys something from you and you have trouble with him and you block him from buying any more items, he can still contact you because you guys have had a past transaction. And I understand that. But eBay offers an option where you can block a buyer who has not yet purchased from you from not only purchasing, but from contacting you. And I have that item, I have that checkbox selected in preferences, and it's not working. And the proof of it is that this guy with the Acura, who I blocked in the past, and who has never bought anything from me, is still able to message me. And I find that very concerning. And I'd like to know if any of you guys have any ideas or any experience with this. Please comment below if you do. Next item is last night, Thursday night, I was invited to a group meeting with some eBay executives. And yes, this one I am allowed to talk about. We talked about some of the changes that are coming to eBay, some of the ones that were announced in the eBay Fall Seller Newsletter. And I actually learned a couple of things that I didn't know that I want to pass on to you. As you know, eBay is big on item specifics. They want you to include as many item specifics as you possibly can, depending on what line you sell in. And the reason is not because they want to be mean or they want to make you do more work. The reason is it's going to help your item get picked up in Google search. I sell in eBay Motors. And one of the things eBay is big on is the MPN or the manufacturer's part number. So let's just say I'm selling a Ford alloy wheel center cap. I will always include the MPN in the field where it asks for it. It helps a lot. I will also include the drop down menu where I can say what vehicles this particular cap will fit. Now, unfortunately, adding the MPN, the MPN rather, is not going to keep the screwballs away because there are some people that just don't read and go by the pictures and they will buy the wrong size. But one tip that I did learn last night is besides adding the MPN in the field for the MPN, if you have room in your title, it helps to include it in the title as well. That is something I did not know and I'm going to start doing that I haven't started yet, but I'm going to start doing that and see if it changes sales for a positive manner. So I figured I'd pass that on to you. Another change I'm going to start, and I actually started it months ago a little bit, 
but I'm going to crank it up is no returns. No returns on all my dog items. Now if I have a popular item like for a foreign car like a Toyota, a Volkswagen, a Nissan, those I will probably accept returns on because if a buyer returns it to me I will have no problem selling it to somebody else. But there's quite a few dog items mainly in the domestic car line field specifically number one GM I don't want that stuff back so I'm going to be changing those listings to no returns and I'm not going to bend about it whatsoever just like with the cancellations I'm sure most of you have seen my disclaimer in my listing saying I will not cancel for any reason and I will not a time has come when all eBay sellers must stand up for what they believe in. That's how I feel. As far as the eBay fall seller update is concerned, it was not a really earth-shattering update. There was something that really disappointed me, and that is that eBay is really touting the fact that it's giving, quote, most sellers, unquote, 100,000 free listings but you're only getting those free listings if you sell in specific categories and eBay Motors is not one of them so I am not getting any of those 100,000 free listings those to me are absolutely worthless I don't know why they would exclude a category like eBay Motors but I have noticed going back many years eBay seems to exclude eBay Motors in quite a few promotions. Also, if you read the fall seller update, they are bending over backwards to eBay sellers who are selling expensive watches. Now, I honestly don't know why. In the past, eBay has instituted a policy of no final value fee on people selling expensive sneakers. Again, guys, I don't know why. I, I just don't have the answer. But eBay wants to be known, I guess, as a site that sells watches and sneakers. But I'm telling you, eBay is a lot more than watches and sneakers. I noticed this week a big slowdown in sales. Over the last two weeks, it's been getting slower and slower but not really worrisome slow but just slower but this week it really got slower now I'm not saying I was shut out any days or I'm not complaining about sales per se I'm still doing okay but I'm not doing the anywhere near the record levels I was for the last let's say four or five months that was just record-setting territory and you know I don't know if I'll see that again but I am slower right now than I would like to be and I'm wondering guys how your sales were this past week would you please chime in and talk about that below because I'm curious to see if it's just an eBay modus thing or if it's something that's basically spread out among the site also have you guys received any cancellations or returns this week that you want to talk about I would like to hear about that as I said earlier I received five returns all during the period Friday afternoon to Saturday morning. Four of them were legit. One of the guys, and this stymies me, I have a lot of quantity listings where you can buy one, two, three, four items. Well, this guy changed the quantity manually from one to three, wiping me out. I only had three he intentionally wiped me out bought them all got them and said they're wrong why would anybody intentionally change the quantity from one to three without going outside and looking at their car first this is not the first time this has happened to me but it really stymies me these people filed returns last Friday five of them do you know only one of the five actually has already put the item in the mail one of them for a twenty dollar item he has already shipped the item back to me he was honest he didn't read the listing I don't really have a problem with him other than that he can't read
But the other guy I was telling you about, the one that's claiming a false item not as described, I held my ground and I wrote back to him and said, these are metal hubcaps. There is no way the clips will break during shipping. I said, it can't happen. I said, what I think happened is I think you broke them trying to put them on the car because you're inexperienced. And he wrote back to me and said, I'm going to provide pictures to you. Give me till tomorrow. That was last Sunday. Today is Friday. Now, as you know, eBay has a very strict policy that we, the sellers, have to respond by a certain day or they will step in and take action. And if they step in and take action, it's a defect against us. No questions asked. Guys, do not test me on this. If eBay steps in, you're going to lose. So what I'm saying to you is today is the last day, September 11th, for me to address this. And the buyer has not responded with the pictures he claimed he would, in spite I wrote to him, in spite of the fact that I wrote to him twice during the week, asking him to provide the pictures, which he didn't. So, knowing that eBay is going to nail me with a defect, I had to select the option that says send the buyer a label at your expense, meaning I'm going to have to pay for that. Now we'll see whether he responds and send the items back during eBay's required time period. And I'll let you know about that next week. Guys, there's a few things I can't do this week. I can't visually take a drink from the Fox News Cup of Life because my camera is broken and I'm requisitioning a new one. And hopefully I'll have it by next week. So yeah, just so you do know, guys, this is the Fox News Cup of Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. And I will now do my regular Friday closing. Guys, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thank you for watching this video. Each week I come out here and I make these videos to try and help you guys stay successful on eBay. If you think I'm doing a good job, please leave me a thumbs up. It tells me I'm on point and appreciated. If you don't think I did a good job, tell me in the comments section what you'd like me to hit up next week and I'll be glad to do it if possible. Remember, I'm a seller friend, not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind. I've solved a lot of problems. I'm still making money online. I've never worn a mask and I never will. I will never, ever change my voice or distort it in any way because I feel that's dishonest and unscrupulous. Hey, I'm still a CEO and a CFO of my own company, so yeah. Guys, go out there, make a ton of money this week on eBay, rock on and peace. And as always, in your eBay dealings and your dealings with people in real life, don't be fitchy. Ha <laughs> ha.